Hi, Tom. Hi, Jason. Are you ready to learn some more about air blast well, spread? Actually. Great. In our last video, we learned about air direction, air volume, and travel speed. This time, we're going to talk about nozzles and coverage. I'm sure nozzling an air blast sprayer is exactly like nozzling a boom sprayer. Actually, Tom, that's a myth. You know what? Maybe I can show you. If I were nozzling a sprayer, I would find out the travel speed I wanted to go and the water volume I wanted to apply. Then I would use nozzle charts to figure out the right size nozzle at the pressure I wanted to use to give me the spray quality I needed. Well, if it's a new sprayer or a new operator, then that's fine. But established operations already have nozzles in use and they want to know if they're being effective and efficient. In either case, I like to work backwards. Backwards? Backwards. I use the spray coverage to determine the sprayer settings rather than the other way around. We've already established travel speed and air settings to penetrate the canopy, so let's leave whatever nozzles are already on the sprayer. The ones the grower typically uses? Right. Just double check that the pressure is accurate and that the flip over nozzle bodies or valves are in the open position. Now we need water sensitive paper. We just write on the back to correspond to the position in the canopy. No matter the crop, clip them at the top, bottom, and spanning the depth of the canopy. Papers can be folded or you can place two back to back facing the alleys. It must help to draw and label a simple diagram like this so you know where each paper came from. Yes, it does. And use some flagging tape to mark the positions so you can easily recover the papers and then replace them for subsequent trials. Now work with a partner. The operator sprays from one side while the partner watches to see if the sprayer is over or undershooting the canopy, which is wasteful. Then the partner inspects the papers when the spray settles. Finally, the operator sprays from the other alley and the papers are retrieved. Yeah, baby. You can learn a lot when sometimes wind and turbulence will cover both sides of the target with just one pass from the sprayer. That's usually a clue that there's too much flow in that position. What if the operator undershoots or overshoots the target? If it's a foliar application, just turn those nozzles off. It's just drift and waste anyway. What if there's uh, too little or too much coverage on the paper? There's no hard and fast rule, but Typically, 85 droplets per square centimeter and 10 to 15 percent overall coverage is great for any foliar application. Just use the laminated cutout that comes with the water-sensitive paper to inspect your coverage. Remember that we've already calibrated the air, so if you see too little coverage, you need more liquid flow from the corresponding nozzle positions. If papers are drenched, reduce flow from the corresponding nozzles. You can even see shadows when obstructions prevent spray from hitting the paper. What if environmental conditions change or the crop grows? Well, you should only calibrate in conditions you'd normally spray in. You can adjust your flow by 10% or so using pressure, but if the crop really fills in or the weather changes significantly, you might have to recalibrate. So working backwards is a process. You establish good coverage first and then adjust sprayer settings. That's it. Makes sense. It's itchy. 